Yes, that's not a matter of opinion. It's a matter of facts. So the president is obviously insecure over having a free press. He just tolerates the press as long as journalists cover events, report on events that in a way that doesn't criticize him. But when they when they cross the line, ayun, magkaka problema. Marami ng instances yan, Rappler and others, uh, alternative media, and then campus journalists. Meron mga violations na mostly uh, perpetrated ng forces ng regime. So it's a it's a fact. Even in supposedly advanced democratic countries, there remain problems in the press or with the press. So for example, in the US and in Europe, uh, the, the governments always try to influence the press one way or another. And there are restraints uh, to their coverage. So whether, whether a country is called democratic, it's it's immaterial. Uh, it's always between government and the press. Because uh, authorities are always insecure about their position, and they always view or perceive journalists as threats. So if you ask the wrong questions, uh, if you uh, go to a wrong place, you'll be called out. Kahit sa US eh, tawag sa kanila, fake news. CNN, ABC, NBC, CBS, The New York Times, they're being called fake news by the president. And, and the president is actually inciting people to um, harm them. It has happened once. Uh, that during a rally in the US with Trump in attendance, uh, support of the president actually physically attacked a cameraman so whether a country is called democratic or not that's not an issue that's not a central issue it's, it's the issue is whether the press is free to gather impart or report process information without interference and without fear of retribution Ang po kasi, fake news is a political problem. Secondarily, a media problem. Bawa, we have, we have recently seen uh, media and the academe launch check.ph. But as long as government, businesses, and other stakeholders in society do not support them, may limited value. Kasi for example, you would try to fact check the president but if the president is unwilling to accept criticism or correction, vain. Maging vain yung ano, fact-checking effort. In the same way, many other countries afflicted with the fake news phenomenon. Why? Because fake news is precisely a political tool. So they don't, they don't ask to be corrected. They're not begging to be corrected. Having said that, of course, we would like uh, young people to fact check news, fact, fact check what they see and hear uh, but that's not really a problem among young people I don't think young people are looking for a fake newscast or a fake newspaper or a fake news website they know where to go so this is uh, this problem is quite overblown media wise if you if you take a look at all the reportage that we've watched a very small portion very very negligible portion turn out to be fake news tapos yung media they have their own ways of correcting it so yun siguro kailangan pa ng pag-uusap kasi nga uh, kailangan nating malaman ano ba talaga yung nature ng fake news is it a media problem like uh, kailangan lang ng corrections? Hindi eh. 
uh, fake news, disinformation, misinformation are weapons, political weapons, to confuse, corrupt, and to crush the public. So it's a political problem that goes beyond what media and the youth could do uh, in school or at the office. Ang dominant narrative in conventional wisdom, ang number one problem namang ng elek sa election ay ang bo bobong botante, which is uh, fake news, misinformation, and disinformation. We have a messy political system, not because of the voters. It's because of guns, goons, and gold. It's because of the political dynasties, the trapos. They are inbreeding. They are cross-breeding among themselves. Voters didn't have a say regarding the candidates or the parties or both. It was the president and Sarah who chose the administration slate. It was the it was the vice president, only the Liberal Party who chose the opposition slate. Uh, Sarah Duterte and Rodrigo Duterte, they're monopolizing the choices in the local elections. Sarah would be raising the hand of one candidate. Uh, Rodrigo Duterte would raise the hand of the rival candidate for the same city or for the same province. So the voters don't have a say in this mess. They will have a ceremonial say on election day. So the role of big money, the role of traditional politicians, dynasties, the president, Sara, the main opposition, hindi na bibigyan ng pansin. Eh, sila yung may kasalanan dyan sa basurang nangyayari. Siguro magandang, ano, magandang mapag-usapan ng mga, ano, mapag-usapan ng mga organizations, ng media, yung mga issues, yung mga forces, forces moving and acting to influence the elections. Isang nga lang dyan, money. Where, where's all this money coming from? Uh, money used to buy tarpaulin, to buy TV time for ads, to organize uh, uh, rallies. There must be an explanation. Uh, hindi, hindi, hindi yung choice ng public. Kasi pumunta na lang siya dun eh. Social media and media in generally, they refer to two things. Media, mga tools, mga channels. And then, social media and media as an arena. Now, the, the dominant parties, the president, they have, frankly, a juggernaut, uh, a commanding lead in in virality, in, in coverage. They're talked about every time the president speaks, it's in social media. This is the president. Uh, it, will, it will have an effect because people are affected by what's, by what's being said by the president. So we cannot, we cannot deny that. Uh, we also cannot deny that the administration and, and its parties and supporters, they are more prepared and they are more uh, established in social media and they are more well funded so kailangan factor din yun. again media could also be just a reflection so the dominant parties are the hugpong and pdp laban so it's natural that they have a commanding presence or lead in social media when the president speaks everybody listens when the Mayor of Davao speaks, everybody listens. She's the head of the slate. So, you know, whether it's translate yun, partly because of social media, I do not know. But what's, what, what we know is that the administration seems to have already a big advantage in getting most of the local government officials, even their rivals, under their party. Because it turned out pareni. If, if, you're, if you're a national candidate and you have a uh, national network of governors, mayors, uh, barangays, chairmen, you would most likely have a fighting chance. Now that 
they may not they may or they may not have social media presence so kailangan natin ano kailangan nating on one hand wag i wag i deflate on the other hand wag i overblow yung social media kasi uh, wala tayong metrics eh wala tayong indicators for success except the results eh alos lahat naman sa kanila hindi lang sa social media ng kakampaign uh, dati yan nice to have ngayon must have pero hindi pa rin siya yung principal means